A speech is given on a cold day in December in Washington, D.C., and the words are being spoken by none other than Superman himself. He is speaking about the importance of the Justice League and why it had been formed. The press conference is being held as an induction ceremony for the League's five newest members, Dr. Fate, Red Arrow, The Atom, Plastic Man, and Icon. While they are receiving their membership cards, the younger members of the team that aren't officially a part of the League watch on in the library inside. The newly inducted heroes make their way inside to see the younger members of the team before heading to the watchtower. However, they disappeared, presumably for a mission, after Robin got a notification on his watch. Over the Smoky Mountains, the bio ship comes into view with the younger heroes all inside. They are following a tip that says Jade, or Cheshire, has been spotted getting on a plane in the area. The main thing that they are worried about besides Cheshire herself is the case that she is carrying. It is the same case that the team had tried to stop the allies of the Injustice League from getting back in New Orleans. Kid Flash informs the others about how they almost had the case the first time but, of course, takes the time to remind Artemis that she was the one who screwed up that original plot. Miss Martian then announces that they are beginning their approach on Cheshire's jet. But the team is left in shock as they see the plane has crashed at the bottom of a ravine with no survivors being shown. They begin to check the crash site to piece together what happened and why the government isn't already all over the scene. However, Robin informs them that Cheshire's ID was hidden so she wouldn't get picked up on any radar, and literally flew so low that the radar couldn't catch the flight plan either. Superboy then picks up a piece of the wing and throws it away while questioning where the bodies are. It is at this moment that Cheshire finally appears above them, still holding the case. Artemis is slightly relieved that her sister is alive and well, but that moment is quickly brushed over as the Riddler, and his henchmen are standing right above them on the opposite side of the ravine as Cheshire. He gives a small rhyme and then electric poles emerge from the ground at the edge of the cliffs encircling the crash site from above. They spark to life, emitting a green glowing force field, and surround the heroes and the plane, trapping them in an instant. It's an ambush. Riddler taunts the team from above, questioning if they really thought they had the upper hand when following Cheshire. As the Riddler is complaining about the constant interference from the heroes, Aqualad asks Miss Martian if everyone is linked telepathically. She answers yes, and the fight begins. Satana recites a spell and it begins to snow inside the barrier as the Riddler's henchmen descend down toward the crash site. Aqualad screams for Superboy to go take care of the pylons and the half-Kryptonian puts the last shield he has on his arm for extra power before entering the fight. Cheshire is about to make her way up the rest of the cliff face when Artemis blocks her with an arrow, and she drops the case. The rest of the team continues to fight the henchmen, getting caught in a couple of traps. Superboy uses his heat vision to melt one of the pylons before the Riddler's assumed right-hand man, a nasty-looking green orc with a scar down the right side of his chest, attacks him. Superboy picks his attacker up in the air and begins flying, much to Robin's surprise. He then uses his heat vision to trap the orc against the side of the cliff and begins punching him so fast that it sounds like rapid fire gunshots. The quick pummeling causes an avalanche and Cheshire narrowly saves her sister, Artemis, from being crushed as the boulders fall. Luckily, no one sees Cheshire's act of love as she leaves Artemis there. As she watches her sister walk away, she notices that the villain had left the all-too-important case under a pile of rocks. Robin takes out another one of the side henchmen as Satana uses magic to bind and gag the Riddler. The sorceress says another spell to clear the snow away, and the fight is over. Back at Mount Justice, Batman begins to scold the young heroes but is actually proud of them for not following orders and doing what needs to be done. With the mysterious case opened, they find reveal small crystal-like objects that are embedded with some kind of nanotechnology. Icon deducts that the technology is not of this earth, and the veteran heroes decide to bring the case to the Watchtower, leaving the younger members on Mount Justice. Aqualite is quick to point out that someone had tipped off Cheshire and Riddler to the upcoming arrival, thus reenacting the mole discussion. Superboy is the first to jump to anger after once again, but indirectly being accused. Aqualad now takes the time to point out that his attack on Mammoth almost got Artemis eliminated. Connor begins to walk away, not wanting to be questioned when Lex Luthor's voice echoes in his head. The boy cringes in pain as the bald villain acknowledges he has used his last shield, and offers him more if he meets him outside of Prisca. With that, Superboy heads out to get more of the empowering stickers. He arrives in Santa Prisca where Lex Luthor introduces him to his associates, most of whom he already knows. Queen Bee, Sportsmaster, Mercy, and Blockbuster. He also takes the time to introduce the hero to Bane, the evildoer whose island they are currently set up on. Suddenly, a helicopter approaches and it is revealed that Artemis and Cheshire are inside. Superboy is stunned but the young archer states that she got bored of the hero thing. Before there is any time to even digest what just happened, the bio ship enters from above and Mgan flies out shocked that both Superboy and Artemis are already there. Now that both of these young women are seemingly on the opposing side, Superboy states that he's in two, as long as he gets more of those shields from Lex Luthor. He quickly calls Superboy's bluff and shuts him down again by using two words, Red Sun. 
This leaves Superboy useless and frozen as Artemis steps up and asks what needs to be done by them. The villains disperse and Superboy is left to recall his memories of right before he left. He had told the rest of the team about the shields, what they do, and where he got them. Everyone is clearly shocked that Lex Luthor is Superboy's human father and he tells them that he has been summoned to Santa Prisca. Through another flashback, we also learn that Artemis told the team about who her family is and Emgan showed everyone her true white Martian form. Back in real time, however, Artemis and Emgan have started their double cross on the villains. We learn that Emgan has wiped any and all other coatings from Superboy so he can't be controlled by Luthor and the rest of the team shows up for reinforcements. The fight ensues and the team catches Sportsmaster and Blockbuster while all the others escape. Back at the Watchtower, Batman is looking over the contents of the case when Red Arrow joins him. It is now that we learn Red Arrow is the double crosser and has put the entirety of the Justice League under some kind of mind control and Vandal Savage enters the Watchtower. Last second we learn that Red Arrow was also under some sort of control, and is distraught to learn that he had been the mole all along. On episode 26, back in Washington, DC, Red Arrow is running through the subway, fighting off the adult members of the Justice League. A train approaches and the Archer is able to slip through a drain grate on the floor of the subway, leaving the Justice League behind. At Mount Justice, a mind-controlled Batman and Red Tornado are telling the younger members that Red Arrow was the mole the whole time. They are shocked to learn this as well as the fact that apparently, this whole time Roy Harper has been a Cadmus clone program to have the drive to join the Justice League. After Batman drops this atomic information, he leaves Red Tornado to look after the kids and heads back to the Watchtower. Almost immediately, the robot powers down and Robin realizes that there is something interfering with him. Satana states that not only did she get an off feeling from Red Tornado, but she also was getting one from Batman. The rest of the team agrees because the masked millionaire never addresses them as kids. The young fighters decide to split up leaving Robin, Kid Flash, Zatanna, and Rocket to stay and figure out what is wrong with Tornado while the rest of them head out to find Red Arrow. Zatanna comes up with the idea to download Red Tornado's consciousness into the android he built for himself so there would be nothing blocking his actions. As they are doing this, Black Canary appears and is angered by the fact that they are doing such things to the robot. Right as the upload is complete, the android sits up and warns the children to get out of the cave immediately. Black Canary screams supersonically making them all aware that she is also being controlled. They quickly defeat and capture Black Canary and the android of Red Tornado once again informs them that she is the least of their problems and that they need to flee the cave as quickly as possible. Using Superboy's sonic cycle, they get out just before Dr. Fate, Icon, and Captain Marvel transport from the Watchtower. Black Canary and a powered-down Red Tornado are with them in the sonic cycle as the android warns them to stay off any kind of radio but also reminds them they must find the rest of their team. The remainder of the heroes is still searching for Red Arrow in the bioship when Aqualad states that he knows Roy would keep weapon caches in different cities. They stop at an abandoned building, and Aqualad breaks down a door to the supposed weapons room. Inside, Red Arrow stands ready to shoot an arrow at his friend until he can ensure that he is not also being mind-controlled. Once Aqualad passes his test, Red Arrow joins them in the bioship and begins explaining that he had been mind-controlled the entire time. He believes that Sportsmaster had been his handler and would use the term Broken Arrow to put him into a hypnotic state similar to that of Red Sun for Superboy. Aqualad asks the Archer how it is that Batman was able to figure out that Red Arrow was a Cadmus clone, but still let him in the league. However, the team then quickly learns that Batman is still under control because he hadn't found out anything about Red Arrow. Back in the Sonic Cycle, Red Tornado's android informs the younger members that Vandal Savage is still in control of the adult heroes. He tells them all about the Sterotech technology and how he had quickly created a subprogram in himself before the infection had occurred. This subprogram would cause his body to shut down if he ever tried to infect another person. The conversation in the bio ship is similar as Red Arrow tells his team that he was able to narrowly escape the Sterotech control by running when Vandal Savage took a moment to bask in his own glory. Miss Martian tells the Archer that she can wipe any and all pre-programmed control from his mind as Robin, and the rest of the team board the bio ship on the sonic cycle. When they land, Black Canary wakes up. Back at the Watchtower, Red Tornado, Black Canary, and Red Arrow arrive reprogrammed with the information that the younger members of the team are also infected and ready for reprogramming. It is now that Vandal Savage tells them that he knows that none of it is true, and that they are no longer infected either. He has Green Lantern hold them with his powers and reminds them that he will have no problem fixing them easily. As the heroes struggle in their magical bonds, Vandal Savage tells them the truth about what has been occurring this entire time. The villains used all types of bioengineering, robotics, and even techno-magic to perfect the Sterotech and harness full mind-controlling ability. While he explains the timeline of his plan, he reinfects Black Canary and Red Tornado while also infecting Red Arrow for the first time. 
However, Savage is completely unaware that Red Tornado bypassed the security upon arrival, allowing the young heroes to enter the watchtower secretly from another entrance. As they arrive, Plastic Man is unloading crates of something when an arrow hits him, and he is surrounded by green smoke. This distraction allows one of the younger members to place a different nano chip on his skin, rendering the old one useless and clearing any kind of mind control from his system. They do this with three other heroes before anyone notices. As the villains are realizing that the young heroes are on board, they also notice that Black Canary, Red Tornado, and Red Arrow never came back online and are under their control. This is when Black Canary uses her supersonic scream and the three try to uninfect it as many heroes as they can before they are overpowered by the other returning Justice League members. The children, however, are running through and curing the other heroes left and right thankful that the doctors at Cadmus were even able to provide them with a cure. The only problem is that the nanotechnology that cures them takes longer to do so than the original mind control chip does. Therefore, the heroes remain useless when needed immediately. As Rocket traps Wonder Woman, Superboy fights Superman, Robin fights Batman and Mgan fights her uncle. Miss Martian is able to cure her uncle. However, the boys are having trouble with their adult counterparts. They decide to deal with one at a time and Robin and Superboy are able to cure Batman before using kryptonite to weaken Superman long enough to stick a cure on him. The villains quickly realize that their plan has been thwarted for now and flee from the Watchtower. As they disappear, the new year is announced by the Watchtower's automated system and the kids share some quick smooches to celebrate their victory as well as a successful year of being heroes. Superboy and Mgan are standing on the edge of the Watchtower looking over Earth when Superman approaches and learns that Connor has taken the last name Kent. Superboy is immediately nervous that the Kryptonian will be angry. However, he is rather proud of the young clone and might finally be coming around to the idea of having one. Back in the boardroom, Red Arrow is still coming to terms with the fact that he is a clone and announces that he must try and find the real Roy. Batman tells them that Guardian is searching Cadmus as they speak. However, the Cadmus facility is being ransacked by the villains and they are taking everything that could possibly give them the upper hand, including Superboy's clone match. It is then that we learn the real Roy is still in a pod at Cadmus about to be taken by the villains for future use. Back at the Watchtower, the team realizes that six members of the Justice League disappeared for 16 hours while under mind control. Now the big question is, what was done in those 16 hours? 